Freshwater fish are incredibly diverse and extremely important for the food, nutrition, and income of millions of people around the world, especially in rural or impoverished areas. However, freshwater environments and the fish that live in them face a host of serious threats, and many are dangerously imperiled. In places where fish populations are threatened by over-harvest, one solution is to prohibit fishing in specific places to let fish grow and reproduce. This strategy has taken the form of marine protected areas in the ocean, as well as freshwater protected areas in rivers, lakes, and wetlands. In Southeast Asia, these freshwater protected areas have emerged as a form of community-based management called Fish Conservation Zones, or FCZs. When successful, FCZs can benefit both people and the environment by protecting and increasing fish populations while also increasing fish catches and food security of local people as fish spill over from the protected area. The focus on bottom-up management can empower communities to sustainably manage the natural resources that they depend on. If you are interested in establishing FCZs in your country, the first step is to identify the relevant legal framework. Protected areas are often established in a top-down manner by government authorities. Does your country have a legal framework that allows local people to participate in freshwater fisheries management? This is known as co-management, in which communities participate in management with the legal backing of the government, which can give them some authority to enforce the rules of their FCZ. It will be important to find out in advance which process to follow for legal approval of an FCZ, the required documents, and roughly how long it will take. FCZs restrict fishing in certain areas, so they can limit a community's access to resources in the short term. It is important to observe social safeguards when embarking on any sort of resource management project with communities, such as identifying vulnerable individuals or households that could be most affected by the protected area, and trying to design the regulations to limit their negative impacts. You should document community concerns, try to engage a diversity of stakeholders in the process, and establish a grievance mechanism. Fish conservation zones are a form of fisheries management and can be viewed as part of the fisheries management cycle. The cycle for any management strategy includes establishment, implementation, monitoring and evaluation, and adapting management as needed. The first phase of fisheries management is to meet with a community to identify challenges in their fishery situation and potential management solutions. This should start with a community conversation about whether the fishery has changed. Have fish catches declined? Has the size or diversity of fish declined? Why does the community think this is? And what do they think could be done to address these threats? FCCs can help address some problems, but not others. They can help address heavy fishing pressure, but FCZs alone cannot solve the problems of pollution, habitat degradation, or hydropower construction. They are also just one tool in the fisheries management toolbox. Other tools include regulating fishing times, such as setting a fishing season, regulating fishing gears, or regulating the sizes or species of fish that can be kept. These tools can also be combined with FCZ management. One of the most important factors for ensuring the sustainability of a community co-managed FCZ is to ensure that the community makes the decision about which type of management to pursue. Ultimately, the community will have the responsibility to manage their fisheries over the long term. Therefore, they should feel a sense of ownership over the fisheries management process. If a community decides they would like to establish an FCZ, the second phase is to develop the fisheries regulations and write a management plan. It is helpful to identify the specific goals and objectives of the FCZ during this process. What does the community hope the FCZ will accomplish? Understanding their desired outcomes will make it easier to evaluate the success of the FCZ in the future. The management plan should describe the types of management strategies the community will implement. If this includes an FCZ, Will it be in effect all year, or only during certain seasons? Will some types of fishing be permitted in the FCZ, or will it be a no-take zone? Another important step is deciding and mapping where the FCZ should be located. Its location and size should take into account important habitats for fish, 
and should be a place that is feasible for the community to regularly monitor and enforce. The management plan should also include specific penalties for breaking the rules of the FCC, assign roles and responsibilities for management, and include a budget and a funding mechanism. Some of the key activities that may require funding and should be planned at this stage include patrolling and enforcement of the FCC regulations, outreach and engagement with the community, and future effectiveness monitoring. The management plan should be reviewed and approved by both community members and the relevant government offices. The third phase is about implementing the FCZ regulations. This includes marking the boundaries of the FCZ, installing signs, and announcing the regulations widely in the community. Outreach and awareness raising efforts can help explain the purpose and rules of the FCZ and help build community support. Community members should also know how they can participate in FCZ enforcement and who they should report illegal fishing to. When possible, FCZ management can also be integrated with cultural beliefs. Capacity building and training are important to help communities learn how to manage their fisheries. This includes how to patrol and enforce the regulations of an FCZ. Sometimes resource management issues can be contentious, so it is important to develop a strategy for addressing conflict as it arises. Other activities that might be part of FCZ management include restoring habitat, developing alternative livelihoods such as ecotourism, and seeking networking opportunities. Once an FCZ has been in place for some time, the fourth phase is to monitor its effectiveness to see whether it's performing successfully. This involves selecting indicators of effectiveness to measure, which could relate to fish populations, FCZ management or enforcement, or benefits to local communities. Different methods can be used to collect data on these indicators as part of an FCZ assessment, such as conducting a fish survey or interviewing community members. In phase five, data from the assessment are analyzed to identify any strengths and weaknesses of the FCZ. What is working and not working? In phase six, the results of the FCZ assessment are shared broadly with the community, the management team, government partners, project donors, or any other relevant stakeholders. In particular, the assessment team should share any recommendations for improving FCZ management. In phase seven, the FCZ management committee or other authorities can decide whether to make any changes to the FCZ management based on the results of the assessment. These could be big changes, such as moving the FCZ boundaries or changing its regulations, or small adjustments, such as modifying the patrolling protocols of the enforcement team. After some time, FCZ management should be assessed again to see if it is performing well. In this way, FCZ management is a cycle that repeats with continued adjustments and improvements. CEPF grantees have developed a wealth of experiences related to FCZ establishment in the Indo-Burma Biodiversity Hotspot. More information about FCZs, as well as grantee successes, challenges, and lessons learned, can be found in the guidebook Establishing and Managing Freshwater Fish Conservation Zones with Communities at cpf.net slash learning. Although they are just one solution for freshwater conservation, fish conservation zones show great promise for benefiting both freshwater fishes and the people who depend on them.